everybody it's ty inspire and welcome back to the channel of course i am so excited today for this episode and i think that it's going to be a lot of good information for some of you so i'm here today with my friend and neighbor val mm -hmm. and she is also from the states and she is living here in ghana and she's my neighbor like i said so that's how we met mm -hmm. And so ever since then, we have um, we have some like a connection mm -hmm. because we <laughs> we are from or where we live. Uh -huh. You lived in the same state that I am from mm -hmm. for for many years, and even the same city. Yeah, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and she lived in Madison. Mm -hmm. And so when we found that out, it was an immediate connection. <laughs> of course, because how do you come all the way to another continent? to meet someone that is from the same area as you are. Live on the same area. street. Exactly. Three houses down, so right? <laughs> it's crazy. It's yeah. wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're excited today about the, the conversation that we're going to have. So join us. Now I believe I can be all I dream The connection to destiny is me So, let's start with why Ghana? Why did you choose Ghana? And uh, maybe a little bit about how you chose Ghana. Oh, well. <laughs> okay, that's Ghana a Ghana choose that's you. Good. The Ghana choose you. I think Ghana, Ghana chose probably me. chose me to some degree, for sure. I think um, I, to be 100% honest, and I'll just start off with just kind of uh, wellness, right? When I uh, started um, researching places to travel, um, I knew that I was going to come to Africa and I knew I was going to bring my children to Africa. Um, but I was looking for a place that really would uh, feel like it was healing to me for so many different reasons. And Ghana, um, when I started doing my research, Ghana just automatically felt like that. Um, and I was uh, conducting a lot of research by looking online um, and watching a lot of YouTube videos. And so there are people here already and uh, I just fell in love with what I saw in the background, how they were living their lives and how like they looked healed. And so I wanted a piece of that. Mm -hmm. I wanted some of that. So. Right, that mm -hmm. healing is important. And mm -hmm. I always talk about the peace yeah. that I felt immediately when I came here. So it sounds like you were looking for that same thing, that healing, that peace, yeah. um, especially when you, know, you come from the United States mm -hmm. and you're African American. It's a whole different experience living there, um, and I, honestly, a lot of trauma. I think a whole lot of trauma. Yeah, <laughs> that that we go through. So, so yeah, Ghana has um, kind of welcomed us with open arms. I felt the same way. I definitely do. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. So Val is here with her four children. Oh. Four children, <laughs> wonderful, beautiful children. I would like to add. Thank you. They are amazing. <laughs> yes. So you're doing a wonderful job Thank with you. them. Thank you. So how is it? Yeah. You know, um, why did you choose to come here and bring your children here and move here? Because yeah. some people think it's crazy to do that. Yeah. I know. I've talked to people like, are you serious? Like, but tell me about it. So like, I'm gonna try not to start crying. When I talk about it. <laughs> look, you just the second question. You're gonna try to. <laughs> not gonna happen. Not do it. Okay. So so let's, so real talk. Um. Yeah, so my babies are very young. Um, I have when I I have a three year old, a five year old, a six year old, and a seven year old. So I have very young kiddos. Yeah. Um, and as you said it right, um, um, I lived in Wisconsin before I I, I got here, and um, I was having my very own experiences um, in Wisconsin. And you know, I'm a black person from the south, a uh, black woman from the south, so I'm very knowledgeable about the experiences of black women. Mm -hmm. um, and black people, especially black children. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also a licensed clinical psychologist. Mm -hmm. And um, having all of those, that knowledge and awareness and even that education did not protect me uh, from what I uh, saw uh, mm -hmm. that my children were going to go through. Exactly. Um, or even some of the experiences, honestly, that we had um, in Wisconsin. So again, my little boy seven. Um, and I remember the one, the moment, and you know, I'm just gonna uh, be honest about it. The moment that I knew that I wasn't going to stay in Wisconsin with them, 
Um, I we were walking in Walmart one day. My baby, he couldn't have been more than four. My oldest boy couldn't have been more than four. And um, we were just walking. He wasn't doing anything. You know, folks always like, what were your kids doing? Right. He wasn't doing anything <laughs> out of the ordinary. Like I have a, a, a system of uh, monitoring my kids because I have four. Mm -hmm. um, at the time I only had three. Um, and um, we were walking. He was standing beside me. Normally he holds onto a cart um, in front of me and the other holds onto a, the cart and one sits in the basket. Mm -hmm. But he was walking beside me this day. And um, we just happened to be going towards the toothpaste aisle, and this large white man who was about six four, maybe three three fifty, mm -hmm. um, ended up pushing my child. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, and I, I say that to say, um, in that moment, um, my my child looked at me, and I I, I didn't know what was going on, mm -hmm. but I I saw a look of distress on his face. I said, "What what's wrong, Leroy? What happened?" Um, and he said, "That man pushed me." Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I felt so enraged and so um, uh, fearful for my child, but so enraged. Um, that I knew staying there couldn't be good because also I carry. Yeah. <laughs> Got to. Yeah, right. In, in, in Wisconsin, you it's have, true. In America, I think it's, it's I true. think that you're kind of forced. Yeah, and I saw so many things going through my head um, in, for danger for my children, for um, danger for myself and my response to danger for them mm -hmm. and you know the fear is just so ever present um, and not being able to send my kids to school letting them have the educational opportunities that they so wanted and deserved mm -hmm. um, because of all the racial dynamics that happened because of all the violence that happened so I just um, I knew that this was not the existence that I wanted for my kids exactly. and so I made the, the, the choice in that moment um, to find a better life for them Mm -hmm. um, so how we came about Ghana is that we knew uh, that we were leaving and we'd seen so many repatriates come here yeah. and so we wanted to um, make the transition as easy as possible because we'd never been out of the uh, West before mm -hmm. and so this was the obvious choice for me yeah it was the obvious choice yeah I think it was a good choice yeah and the kids was. they seem to be doing well and I think as they grow older, they will appreciate yeah. um, that decision. I really do. Yeah. yeah, I do too. Like I can already see it in them. Um, mm -hmm. They've really just blossomed here. The opportunities that they didn't get in uh, Wisconsin, they are, um, they are, <laughs> they are growing. They are happy. They are ecstatic to be here. So mm -hmm. I'm very happy for them. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the most important things that I recognize is that. They're not growing up with, you know, um, fear of racism or fear of being targeted or mm -hmm. fear of violence on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> yeah. I told you I was going to try to cry. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. So, I'm going to try to stuff that back in. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 I just, it's, I just okay. it's okay, it's yeah. okay, right? But yeah, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. It's, it's serious. It's it's true, yeah. right? And yeah. I, I, I think you know people don't realize if you're not if you're not black and in America, yeah, don't really understand. And if you don't have children, like I don't, um, and, but you know I'm an educator, and so a lot of times all the people that I've taught, they're my children, mm -hmm. so I see it a little bit, but I still don't feel it in the way that you do mm -hmm. to know that fear of being targeted that fear I, i've seen yeah. it happen even if, with my brothers yeah you know being targeted absolutely and yeah like i've had some traumatic experiences just watching them go through yes and then even myself i've yeah. also been targeted um yeah. and 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 had issues you know with you know enforcement and stuff mm -hmm. so it's, it's true. and it's just because of our skin color right honestly Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's very maybe it's okay. Yeah, it's, <laughs> because now things are much better for you and for your children. My kids, and I'm very grateful to be able to um, have created a different uh, truth and reality for them. Yeah, I'm very blessed. Yes, yes. definitely. You, yeah, you are. Mm -hmm. You're doing well. You're doing so well. You're doing well. So let's talk about um, advice that you would give. Um, those that want to bring their children over, it's a big move. 
Oh yeah. And <laughs> very big. Um, <laughs> It says, yeah, it's, it's just a big move and a big decision. So yeah. what would you tell other people that are looking to make that move or that are thinking about making that move? Yeah, it's a real topic. I got a laundry list of things. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll first start off with um, other people. Listen, um, other people will love you. Like you, you're going to have family that loves you clearly, right? Mm -hmm. And almost 75% uh, of them will tell you do not do it. Mm -hmm. Don't come here. Right? That's right. Yeah. Yes, they will. <laughs> because most of them don't have education about Africa in general, right? right. They've been um, subjugated to the propaganda of what they believe is Africa. Right. And so they don't have a lot of in-depth knowledge about what Africa actually is. Mm -hmm. And so people will tell you you'll be eaten by lions, you're going to bring your kids <laughs> It's true, right? Yeah, um, true. <laughs> to live in a place where they live in huts, like because they have so little knowledge. Yeah. Um, so I will tell you to be one hundred percent truthful, uh, to not listen to your people because <laughs> I mean they love it's you, true. but they just don't know. Yeah, right. Um, and so you know you have to um, uh, like uh, put those people in their in their boxes and understand that they they care about you. They're just talking to you out of care, but it's they're living in their own fear. Mm -hmm. Um, and my, I, one of my biggest opponents, honestly, to coming here was like one of my biggest supporters, who is my brother. Mm -hmm. um, and when he when he, he knew that I was coming here and bringing my kids, he became very angry with me. Oh. And he thought it was a really bad decision. But I generally don't make bad decisions around parenting, so, you know, I don't. <laughs> <Okay>. Right. <laughs> and, so, and I'm pretty confident in that. That's good. <laughs> you have to be. That's good. And so I'm pretty confident in that. And so I knew that I was. this was a good decision for me and my kids. Mm -hmm. So I would say, don't listen to your people. Um, I would also say uh, make sure you do your research. Now, there's only so much research mm -hmm. a person can do. Absolutely. Um, but I feel like in some ways I was wholly, I, I, I did research but I wasn't as knowledgeable as I should have been. Let me ask you about research mm -hmm. because we hear that all the time. Mm -hmm. I feel like people may get frustrated. Sometimes I do when I hear it because yeah. people are like, well, you didn't research. Well, do your research. What is research? You yeah. know, like, how do you define research? Because some people say they do their research and they come and it all falls apart. But I think everybody has a different idea of what research is and what things you should be looking for. Yeah. You know, in particular. So that's a great question. And I think it is different for other people. Some people are very meticulous about like what research is. In this yeah. instance, for me, I um, I conducted years of just kind of watching videos. Okay. Literally, I was watching videos for about two years before we actually got here, mm -hmm. um, before we even, ever even visited. Mm -hmm. um, I was watching videos. I was um, reading up on some articles, right? Mm -hmm. And there's aren't there, there aren't a lot of like information out there, yeah. like as far as like articles. So you know that uh, was a uh, few and far between. I was also reading people's blogs. Mm -hmm. I was talking to a lot of people who were here. Yes, like I joined a couple of groups. And I started watching the kind of the things that people were saying that were happening to them while they were here. Mm -hmm. Some of the, the issues and, you know, honestly, in my research, I had to like evaluate, was this potentially still worth the move, right? right. I read the pros and cons. Every time I got more information in, yes. I read pros and cons. Could I be adaptable? Right. Could my children and I um, uh, uh, be able to like overcome some of these obstacles that other people were experiencing mm -hmm. and honestly at the end of the day I was like yeah we, I think we can do this yeah, yeah I think we can yeah. and so it really took me about two years honestly mm -hmm. from when I first started watching YouTube videos before mm -hmm. I even bought a ticket to come here to visit the first time mm -hmm. and, and so when we came to visit mm -hmm. uh, I it was all of us and we were coming for three months the first time mm -hmm. um, and you know, when we first got here, I was like, oh, Jesus, this is not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> For like two weeks, we were, we were really sick. Oh, um, we got the traveler yeah. sickness. And, yeah. you know, people yeah. don't really tell you a lot about that. Right. But that's a real thing. And that, yeah. if you don't come for an extended amount of time, you, exactly. your whole view of what this place could be will be just kind of like misinformed. Mm -hmm. And so the first two weeks, we were so sick. We weren't used to the food. Mm -hmm. And so we were adjusting to all of this, um, like, different way of life. Mm -hmm. And then we were detoxing from American culture, American food, yeah. right? All of these things. Mm -hmm. And so it didn't feel as, like, lovely. Yeah. But it, the day after, which was the 11th day, because I was like, I think we may have to leave early. Um, the 11th <laughs> day, I'm serious. 
after the first two weeks of being sick, the, after the 11th day, I was like, oh, wait, I'm not sick anymore. Everyone's not sick. They're outside screaming and playing in the sun. Mm -hmm. They're eating pineapples and watermelons with seeds and plantains <laughs> and like right there just living their best like kid lives and mm -hmm. i'm able to watch them do it and it was right then in the on that 11th day that i knew that we were not um going to stay in america mm -hmm. i just knew on the 11th day mm -hmm. yeah so do your research do your research, do your research mm -hmm. whatever is it I, I would add to that just being mindful of what's important to you when you do research you have to do it based on you and your life mm -hmm. what things do you need you know researching that um places that you you might need to go things that you feel like you might not be able to live without mm -hmm. you know though what's important to you yeah you know outside of the obvious things just to know a little bit more about the country you have to also just figure out the things that are important to you it's yeah. true. And I will also just add to the, the, the researching piece that even once you research, um, expect the unexpected or be okay with the unexpected. Um, because when you get here, <laughs> right, no one can really tell you what it's like to be in a, a concrete house when the lights go out. Exactly. <laughs> and it's 100 degrees outside. Exactly. Right? No one can really tell you what that experience will mean. Exactly. Um, so just kind of understand that things are going to happen here that you're not used to. Right. And um, that's a part of the beauty of being honestly in Africa or in Ghana. Exactly. I agree with that. Because mm -hmm. I thought that, like, I had seen a lot of information about like the, the roads not being bad. Uh -huh. I was like, okay, yeah, it's fine. Our roads are bad too in America, you know. Yeah. Hey. This is a different kind of van. <laughs> when I got here, I was like, yeah. are you serious? Uh -huh. I was not ready. And I thought I was ready. Mm -hmm. So, and I had, I had researched, like I had known about it, but mm -hmm. being here, like you said, experiencing it is a whole different, um, a whole nother level. Whole so, all the research in the world is not going to prepare you for being here uh, for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. Even people say, come stay, come visit, come visit, come visit. You can visit. Yes. But it's the, it's different from it's living different. here. It's very different. It's different mm -hmm. from living here. Um, I, when I first started traveling and I was living in China, you know, a couple of my friends that had lived in China said like, you are going to be good until about the third month. That's when it's going to hit you. I'm like, okay, yeah, okay, whatever. And I and it was true. Like I was fine, felt like it was just like a permanent vacation. I was adjusting well, and about that third month, I was like, yeah. oh my God, what is happening? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Homesickness yeah. and missing things and yeah, it got it got bad, but then mm -hmm. it got better. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so just know that just visiting is not the same mm -hmm. as living. So you just gotta kind of Saddle up, be ready for some stuff. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's a, a lovely part that you're talking about the emotional roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Almost no one talks about the emotional roller coaster that happens when you are a repatriate coming here, right? Oh, that, um, yeah. Yeah. And that's even on another <laughs> level. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a, there's a time where you really are detoxing and you really are, um, it's, a, there's a chance that you can like, uh, have like these down moments. And I could say, I could describe it as like a depression, yeah. right? Or feeling depressed or sad because you really are, um, missing and grieving some of the things that you thought you wouldn't miss or grieve. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you that that does, um, uh, subside at some point, right? It goes away and you are able to acknowledge all of the beauty that you have here, right? The freedom that you have. Like I've never experienced the type of freedom that I have here that in any place I've ever been, this is just kind of, um, like I can't even describe it, uh, like how you're invisible and also visible mm -hmm. and you don't <laughs> feel like you're going to, you know what I mean? That's good. Yeah. You're going to be targeted or, um, you, you, it, the world feels very open here. Uh, opportunities are vast. If you can work hard, really think about what you want and persevere. I, I think that people can be successful here. Mm -hmm. So I will say that. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm just very much so in love with the place, to be truthful. Yeah, yeah I'm in love with the place. I agree. And yeah. the people. How are you yeah. finding the people? The people are great. Um, yeah. So 
one of the things that was like a check mark for me when we came here. So my family actually came to visit last year. Uh, for, uh, we were supposed to be here for three months, but COVID happened. So we actually only stayed for like a month and a week. Um, but then that within that month, month and a week, like I knew we, I went home, I packed up our stuff, I left our house <laughs> and we were like trying to get a ticket. We already had a ticket here to come back. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, but one of the things that was so different about Ghana, now we've been to other places, like we've been to, like I took my children to travel throughout the United States, we've been to Puerto Rico multiple times, we've been other places. But one of the things that here in Puerto Rico is the part of state, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> but um, one of the things that um, was different here is how people responded to children mm. um and a lot of people i think kind of have this uh, perspective that children are burden um mm -hmm. and so they interact with children as such so but in ghana right people um talk to children they engage with children in such a caring a gentle way uh it's so unexpected so um, when we train our kids in the States on state stranger danger, yeah. um, and when you come here and a random Ghanaian starts talking to your kids, you're like, wait, wait, right, wait, yeah. wait, wait. <laughs> right, sure. but really, um, they are honestly engaged with your child, and it's not malice, it's not, it, it, it's a different world. When people come and grab your children to help you walk across the street, yeah. um, oh my in God. the States, you'd have Can't a, a fit, yeah. right? <laughs> Um, but here it's expected and understood that that's a part of how they all engage as a community. Yeah. And it's not um, something that's, um, that should be feared. And it's really just a mind shift. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I was here last, when I was able to watch that and uh, like just really watch multiple people engage with children like that, mm -hmm. I, I knew that this is how I wanted my kids to, to understand their own little childhood mm -hmm. and exist. So, um, like, I just knew this is it. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. You said so many key things. So I hope you guys are getting all of this, especially the parents out there that, that really are interested in doing this because it's some very good information, I think, and, and insight on um, just the differences and how um, we feel it can be a better life and a better situation. Life changing, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, to to be in this type of environment mm -hmm. opposed to what we're used to mm -hmm. and what we came yeah. from outside mm -hmm. so how did you find a house yeah. for that will you know that's big enough for everybody and you're comfortable yeah how was that process so because we've been here before um, one of the things that I wanted to do is find uh, secured housing and you know there's not a lot of danger here I want to just like say that but uh, folks do have like fenced in housing and I didn't want to like really share like a space with other people right. so I wanted detached housing too and in like a like a an estate or a development and it so happened to be that I had joined again one of those previous those groups um, before I actually came here and one of the people in the groups actually recommended um, this uh, complex because they lived here mm -hmm. and so that's how um, we uh, found this place and yeah and it was important to me to have like all the amenities that we were used to to make our lives a little bit easier to yeah. adjust here right. so um community water had you know because there's not always community water right right um and uh steady lights and also uh places where we could get access to things because it's 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 not always ac accessible so just kind of thinking about what you need for housing is really important um, and especially with kids, right? Because also um, there aren't a lot of hospitals around, right? And so you just kind of have to be in the know, like where you live and where how close that is to like medical care and things like that. Exactly. I'm so glad you said about accessibility because it's so true. You need to, um, I, which a lot of people they're looking for housing and you go on YouTube and you look at these things and it's like, oh, how much and uh -huh. this and that and you try to buy it before you get here or you try to rent before you get here oh my god please it, it scares me so much because there are so many different factors especially if you're coming from the west housing is not going to be the same it's, it's not going to even look or feel the same you need to be here you need to be here you need to find and, and do that on your own you need to know what's around you how it looks if you're just looking at the house you don't know it can be 
on this rocky hill mm -hmm. you know and nobody's gonna tell you that mm -hmm. like you really need to to not just look online and you can see and and start the process but mm -hmm. definitely come so i'm glad you talked about that or, so and cute. also have or have trusted people mm -hmm. um that you've connected with before and that's mm -hmm. one of the things that we did we had trusted people um who've been with us we've known for a couple of years mm -hmm. to come and like search for housing for us okay and tell us the pros and cons of like living in certain places exactly yeah because it's good to know and have options that's right you know yes those those videos help in that way mm -hmm. but wait till you get here to make the decision yeah yeah mm -hmm. good all right so what about finding how do you move a yeah. whole family of people yeah. <laughs> you it's know. true yeah so um yeah i'm super cheap like okay. <laughs> me too i'm glad i'm not the only one <laughs> yeah i'm super cheap always been <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, no, yeah. Right. right yeah but uh honestly uh, i don't believe in spending a lot of money or anything exactly. um and so um the majority of my life like i've been very frugal and so i've created um a little nest egg for myself uh mm -hmm. prior to coming here in order to purchase tickets mm -hmm. or to uh uh have housing and while things are not as expensive in the state here as in the states and they really aren't mm -hmm. um you know adjusting and moving is expensive mm -hmm. um so for example you know, to purchase a ticket for each of us is about a, a eight hundred dollars to a thousand dollars, or was, and so we wanted to, you know, that in itself you got to prepare for, right? You have to prepare for visas for each of your family members, which is about a hundred dollars, sixty to a hundred dollars, right? Yep. Um, and then you have to think about when you get here, how will transportation look? Um, because you know, everyone doesn't have big families, and we're not we're not used to the public transportation, which is like the tro tro or taxis. Mm -hmm. So so we had to either rent a car or have someone who had a car um, uh, drive us around mm -hmm. and so that's kind of what we did mm -hmm. um, so these are like expenses that people don't think about mm -hmm. um, food is not as expensive mm -hmm. um, especially if you eat locally yes, um, yes. yeah but if you like things like Pizza Hut that's going to be expensive yeah. yeah right and I think uh, many of us lived off of Pizza Hut when we first got here yeah did you do <laughs> not really <laughs> really yeah oh no I cooked a lot. Oh, real? Oh. But I was cooking like American meals, so I was, okay. I was maybe spending a lot doing that. Okay. Because I'm trying to find certain things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and if you buy American things, they're, they're here. They're expensive. But they're expensive. Yeah. You're going to spend $7 for four slices of cheese, exactly. right? Exactly. So, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, just kind of be aware of those things. But if you eat locally, you get to save a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, housing is not as expensive um, for a really nice place, I think. You can spend about three hundred dollars a month, mm -hmm. um, but I don't think you have to spend that. What do you think? Yeah, no, no, okay. you don't. You don't. Okay. It, that's real nice living. That's real know, nice living in most places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Once you get into the city, we live outside of the city, mm -hmm. so it's it's cheaper, you mm -hmm. know. But um, I think there are lots of options. It's a very big vast. There are some mm -hmm. areas I think are just as expensive as the U.S. Mm -hmm. in the city. Yeah, um, but. You know, I think there's a, a good wide range. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've seen people pay up to five thousand dollars for housing per month. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And listen, we ain't living like that. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> what for? Like, <laughs> just for amenities? Uh, no. Well, oh uh, yeah, and that's about your 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 what you want, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, if that's what you want, mm -hmm. then go for it. Yeah. But we just got to saying like us, we mm. no, right? And then I got four babies again. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> So, you know, you can't be living like that for me. Right. Um, so, yeah, and I think, uh, like, when we came, we just came with our suitcases. We came with um, our 11 suitcases. We had some <laughs> hair stuff. You know, we always got to hear our hair stuff. Yeah. Uh, one whole suitcase of just hair stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, because I didn't know what the hair situation right. was going to be like. You don't know. Mm -hmm. But, and I got two girls. Mm -hmm. And so, but they had everything we needed, right, mm -hmm. honestly? Mm -hmm. it, they really do. They really do. They have everything, yeah. So, you don't have to bring anything like that yeah. um and i did bring some toys for the kids mm -hmm. um but honestly that wasn't really necessary if you know mm -hmm. where to find toys there are places to find them where they're not crazy expensive mm -hmm. um and so uh, yeah I, I don't think you really have to bring too much of anything mm -hmm. um and as far as um the financial piece of it you know i would say make sure you have a little on uh, next egg. um mm -hmm. be wise with your spending um, and have a, like a little nest egg for like a year 
um, especially if you don't know what you're going to do, if not even more than a year, I think. Because yeah. folks don't know what they're going to do when they come here normally for employment, if yeah. that is a thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so, or for business, mm -hmm. right? So, try to know what you're going to do. That's yeah. probably the best advice. I think so. I think so, okay. because if you come here with just a savings, True. You, yeah, I've seen it happen to so many people. Mm -hmm. They come and then they spend out and they go back home. That's you know, true. they might try to go make more money and come back. But please have some income um, or in. have a plan mm -hmm. to have income as soon as possible. Yeah, yeah, because that's the safest thing to do. I think. It's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Great idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Schooling. Yes. So, schooling. how did you select the school? What what type of school are, are there? In a national school? Are they in a local school? Well, they're in a um, local private school. So um, I think there are three types of schools here. Um, I think there's the international schools where a lot of uh, um, uh, children, foreigners or repatriates may go, mm -hmm. um, or parents who want a certain strata of prestige for their children may go. Mm -hmm. um, there's the local school, which is um, um, where uh, every Ghanaian should have the opportunity to go mm -hmm. um, in their grade schools honestly yep, um, so. and uh, there are also private uh, schools that are not international schools um, where my kids go um, and you know if they had honestly if I could have sent my ch children to a, a local school I probably would have mm -hmm. um, but since they're not um, Ghanaian born uh, that wasn't really an option and so um, the schooling here is a little bit different. Uh, it's not like you, you choose a school based or a school is chosen based on like your zip code. Right. You honestly just, uh, there are schools everywhere. Um, there are schools like um, every two blocks, if not less, honestly. Um, so you can drive down the street and if this school is right for what, you, what, what you're looking for, whether it's what the educational uh, experiences are, whether it's the cost, whether it's whatever you're looking for, um, you can choose that school, fill out an application, and your kid is enrolled that day. It's really just that simple. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we did is we actually spoke to um, some folks who um, recommended a school over here um, that's pretty close to us. Um, and that was important to me because Ghanaian traffic can be ooh, yeah. atrocious. <laughs> You can be in traffic for three hours going to some place that takes like 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so we didn't want that experience for the kids every day. So um, we chose a school that was pretty close and didn't have a lot of traffic. Mm -hmm. And honestly, um, one of the best experiences I have had um, here. And like I wouldn't change anything about it. Great. Yeah, schooling is 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 pretty is pretty uh, direct for the most part. Okay. Yeah, you go. Um, a lot of people will want to know like how much it costs. Mm -hmm. after you fill out the application honestly at a pretty i think this is a mid-level expense school um you could spend like 400 ghana um for like uh three months or a term mm -hmm. and 400 ghana is about what is that it is like a hundred dollars a little less no, less. no yeah about maybe about 75 dollars about 75 dollars so 75 dollars for four months of school and then you may have to purchase a uniform, which is about 100 on Ghana, which is $20. Mm -hmm. um, and then you pay for books, which is, um, you know, maybe uh, 200 Ghana, which is $40. Mm -hmm. And now those books last for the whole year. Mm -hmm. um, and it includes all the books that they need. Um, and then if you feed them at school or transportation, you add about 200 more Ghana, which is about $40. Mm -hmm. So school here is, it's, it's for, it's, if, if you're asking me, right. yes, from my perspective, it's not as expensive, um, but, you know, definitely it, it does cost. Yeah. 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 So, um, but I would also say that it's well worth it. Um, mm -hmm. There are discipline issues for the most part in schools, mm -hmm. as from what I've seen so far. Mm -hmm. um, the kids honestly understand that there's routine. They are expected to, to engage in routine. They get a whole community of people who um, will chastise them and make sure they get to school on time. Uh, and they will also chastise the parents. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Stay on them. Right, it's true. Uh, if their kid is out of line or if the parent is out of line. So, mm -hmm. so you know, 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah so all of those things so are very good community. Very good yeah. community. Mm -hmm. Community is one of the I think the biggest things. things here for me. Yeah. Um, you know, when we come from the states, a lot of times uh, folks are thinking that this should be like a parenting should be like an individual thing. That's not what it is here. No. When you come, people raise their kids in the community, mm -hmm. right? And like we definitely feel that here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so the neighbors will take care of our kids and we'll take care of the neighbor's kids. Yeah. Um, we tell the kids what to do yeah. um, just to keep them safe or whatever. Right. Uh, and it's really just kind of a, a good experience here. Yeah. Well, you know, so, so many things and mostly all, kind of how my world works is that it's, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's around my children, right? My, my world, my children. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the things really are just giving them the basic experiences that I think they deserve. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that they wanted to do is to go to school. Mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that they have been able to go to school here um, and be safe and thrive and enjoy it. Oh my goodness. First of all, I really love the education. Um, there are such higher, there are higher ex expectations for education for kids here. Mm -hmm. Now I know that it's different, mm -hmm. right? There are things that do, do need to indeed change, mm -hmm. um, but the expectations for kids, um, mm -hmm. from what I've seen thus far, is extremely high. So for example, um, kids go to start going to school in what's called crutch here very early on. I think they start going to school like two, two years old. Yeah, yeah and so when my two-year-old was here, um, and she's still here. And it was suggested that she go to school. I was like, what, what you saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. what, what do you mean? A two-year-old yeah. go to school. Right. But mm -hmm. literally, um, uh, I was opposed to it. But then, you know, I came around because that's also what Ghanaians do. And I wanted to see what it was like for her. And honestly, she goes to school. And I didn't know that she was capable of all the things that um, she does. She has little school books, she has homework, she has expectations of sitting at a little desk and following directions. It, it is just really quite amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I really want them to continue like having that opportunity for education. Mm -hmm. um, my other kids have never been in school before. Um, so they are able to just really, uh, I, you know, read at different levels, learn all of these facts at different levels that I didn't know. And I have high expectations for my kids. Like my, well, my two-year-old, my he's now five, but my five-year-old was reading um, at two. And so to see him even blossoming mm -hmm. in his reading ability is unbelievable. Wow. Um, so I'm really wanting to have more experiences for them that are just normal. Yeah. Um, and uh, allowing them to uh, engage with uh, friends and a community in a different way here, yeah. which is really important. Is. Yeah, and they get to play outside all the time it's because it's awesome. sunny, right? Yeah, right. And people and kids play outside. Play is outside. that not? I love seeing that. I love, yes. And then I often stop and talk to kids when I see them with little makeshift things. I'm yes. like, what do you have there? Because this is stuff that you don't see a yes. lot. You know, not that it's not happening at all in America or different places, parts of America, but it's very rare. Kids are inside, they're on the video games, mm -hmm. they're on, I, you know, IT stuff, you know. Yeah. So here, you don't have all of those luxuries. So you're out, you know, and it's good though. It's, it's so great. It's good for the kids. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's experiential learning. It's hands-on, mm -hmm. like actual learning. Uh, and play is learning for children, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so to have them have this, these experiences here yeah. um, is really quite lovely. Yeah, yeah I love it. So. I think that's a part of what's next for us, just kind of keeping like a, a creating a normal for them, mm -hmm. where they really get to experience all that Ghana has to offer. Mm -hmm. As far as education, as far as community building, as far as um, we'll travel a little bit, they'll get to see more things. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think that's where we're gonna be right now. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's Thanks. awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm so glad that you're enjoying it here. I enjoy it here, mm -hmm. and um, there's a nice, good community of people that have moved here too that also help mm -hmm. you know with that transition too mm -hmm. so do your research mm -hmm. um just know that your kids are going to be okay mm -hmm. you know they are adaptable a lot more than we are oh yeah and so you know a lot of times they can adjust and adapt when we can't so yeah um anything that you would say bring with you 
if you come here, you, you bring your kids, make sure you have X, Y, and Z from the States. Because, yeah. I mean, we know that there are some things that we like mm -hmm. um, or that we're used to, we should say. Um, anything that comes to the top of your head? Yeah, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to say no. There's absolutely nothing. Okay. Um, and, you know, we bought the gadgets, right? I got the cell phone, I got the iPad, I got the laptop. Um, but one of the things that I recognize here is that um, I didn't want them to be all in that. Mm -hmm. and, and honestly, those things are available here if you have the finances to pay for them. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I wanted my kids to um, be in the world, to experience the world. And so to me, um, yeah, I, you know, I don't think those things were necessary. Mm -hmm. I also say that I did bring a lot of like little activity books, but mm -hmm. you don't have to because they have activity books here. Now I believe.